What's up, it's Dom. Welcome back to my garage. Today, we're talking about this Fujinon Cinema Zoom Lens. Wait. Welcome back to my garage. My name's Dom, and we're talking about this Fujinon Cinema Zoom Lens. Wait, this, this is not the right one. What's up, I'm Dom. Welcome back to my garage, and today we're talking about this Fujinon Cinema Zoom Lens. So today's episode is about the Fujinon ZK 25mm to 300mm T3.5 Cabrio Cinema Zoom Lens that comes in at a whopping 19 pounds by itself. When I weighed the entire package together with my Amira, my follow focus, the rails, the base plate, the top handle, the entire package weighs 45 pounds. 45 pounds. It is a heavy, heavy setup. This lens is a really good focal length for sports. It's lenses like this and opportunities like this that really like, I don't know, I could, I could do this forever. Like I could test a zoom lens at a sporting event every day for the rest of my life and I'd be happy. That's how much I enjoy shooting sports on cinema glass. Let me just hit some of the bullet point specs of this 25 to 300 lens. It's a PL mount lens. It has an image circle of 31.5 millimeters. It has nine iris blades. So from 25 millimeters to 273 millimeters on the barrel, it is a true T3.5 lens. Once you go past 273 millimeters to 300 millimeters, just at the end there, it does a slight stop down to T3.85. And it is almost unnoticeable. So you say you set your aperture to 3.5 and you zoom past 273 millimeters. It's really hard to catch how the iris will stop down just a hair. So the focus rotation is 280 degrees, but 280 degrees on any barrel is just, it's, it's a lot of rotation. And so that's where I prefer to use a follow focus unit. So I've had that lens for the last two weeks and I have to send it back tomorrow. But how did we get here? How did I get such an amazing piece of cinema glass? Well, we have to go back in time. And the simple ask that I made in one of my very first YouTube videos was this. I mean, these are both Fujinon lenses. These zoom sticks are very hard to find. If anybody knows where to find extra zoom sticks, let me know, because when you lose them, it's really hard to replace. That video today only has 600 views, but you never know who's watching. After I released that video, a couple weeks later, I got an email. And I got an email from the director of marketing of Fujinon. His name's Thomas Fletcher. And he sent me a thank you email. It said, thanks for supporting Fujinon. Thanks for making that video. I'd like to send you some zoom sticks. It was totally unexpected. I was asking my very, very small audience if they knew where I could buy some. Turns out the lens manufacturer ended up shipping me these little pieces of aluminum that literally made my week. I'd always wanted to shoot this lens. And so when it came time to try and figure out how I could get my hands on one of them, I reached back out to Tom at Fujinon. And lo and behold, Tom got back immediately and said, what's your address? Most of these lens companies have loaners available. This is what lens companies do to potential buyers. And I know they do this all the time for big companies and big DPs, but for me in this small little YouTube channel, it really means a lot. Not only are the products great, but it's this customer service side of things that really wins people like me over and hopefully wins my audience over because it is such a great company. This video is not sponsored by anybody. Uh, by the way, if anybody wants to sponsor my YouTube channel, go ahead, but they just loaned me a lens and that's what they do to cinematographers all over the world. So this is how I would set it up. A Nucleus M motor with an Airy Mini Follow Focus 2 Cine Follow Focus unit mounted from the top down. I just wanted to show you guys why someone would take their Follow Focus unit and mount it to the top. Two reasons. I don't have a Follow Focus unit that can attach to 19 millimeter rods. They're too big. I only have a Follow Focus unit that can attach to 15 millimeter rods and I wanted it to be in a reverse direction. As the play goes away from me, I turn the knob away from my face. If the ball or player or action is coming towards me, I now twist it towards my face. 
if you can get that figured out on a camera before you shoot some sports action or any action, I don't know. It just helps my brain and my hand-eye coordination understand. And anybody, again, who shoots sports on cinema glass or uses a follow focus unit for sports and you're a single operator, you don't have a first AC, that little trick is really, really key. And again, it can be achieved with reverse gears added to some of these follow focus units. I do not have any reverse gears, so I'm going to just mount it from the top down. This lens is perfect and is at home on a tripod wherever you want to put it in a sporting event. Where this lens struggles is if you want to shoot handheld because at that focal range, 25 to 300, that is a very, very nice handheld zoom range if you can hold a 45 pound rig. It could not be done with an Amira. Now, if I had an Alexa Mini, if I had a smaller bodied camera, Possibly, but then you're getting into some weird balance issues because it would be just so front heavy. Even with an Ergo rig or an Easy rig, it is just a lot of weight. And so I stuck to tripods and I stuck to hi hats. It was really a challenge to, to be mobile with this setup. And that's one of the downsides to having such an amazing lens at that weight. It comes at a cost of mobility. It's cumbersome and it's hard to do by yourself. You almost need that assistant cameraman to, to help you just maneuver around a field or a pool or a basketball court, wherever you're shooting. I'll just tell you right now, if I could have this lens forever, I wish I could. It's such a great lens to have as a sports cinematographer because if you're going from basketball to water polo to football, you can cover it all. No matter how you do that, was that with a two times extender, with no two times extender? What I end up finding myself doing is I'd find a frame and then I'd stay with it. I mean. Traditionally, you're not zooming a lot. I find these frames, I lock them off, um, I go find another frame, and that's what, it gives you the option to, to find your frame. And especially when you're covering sports and you're trying to get shots that no one else can get, having that kind of range on a zoom lens is really perfect for sports. So this is the optional ENG style digital drive unit, which controls iris, zoom, and focus. When you get to a zoom that's this size, you're gonna need some, some help, and, and the motors in this unit is really what you need for a lens of that size. Easy to remove, easy to attach, and, and easy to calibrate. Sometimes when you have digital drive units on lenses, you don't wanna take them off. Um, when I spoke to Fujinon, they said, no, this was designed to be taken off. Uh, they sent me the instruction manual, but it was pretty straightforward. So I removed it once I got the lens because I wanted to save weight. I was gonna be running this camera and lens package by myself, so I wanted to save as much weight as I could. And I also wanted to test my Nucleus M focus and zoom motors with the lens. And with the 0.8 pitch gear set, it's perfect. If you're in the market for any cinema glass, always reach out to the manufacturer. There are sales members and marketing teams and, and technicians that are always there to answer your questions. And with Fujinon especially, they have always been there when I came calling. And so shout out to Tom and his team for loaning out this lens to me. And if you don't have $42,000 laying around to buy this lens, I understand it. Reach out to the camera houses and the rental houses in your area and see if you can rent a lens like this because it's much cheaper to rent a lens like this than it is to purchase it. So if you enjoyed this content of me rambling on about lenses, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to, add your questions down to the comments below, I read them all, and it helps me shape the future episodes for this channel. Until next time, I'm Dom, I'm in my garage, I'll see you in the next episode.